Hey everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attacker Productions. Today, Bankrupt Ranger once again by Tanner. What's up? And today it is just me and Tanner. Uh, and today's matchup is actually me versus Tanner. Uh, Tanner's brought back Gotenks uh, with his own take on it. It's it's very similar to the Pure Engine. Nothing like super hand controlly crazy, but it has it just enough to make you go, Tanner, can you stop? Versus <laughs> SSG Son Goku, which is I am playing from the set 16. And with that being said, there's buttons on both. Feel free to click them to there for a reason. Well, let's get into this matchup. So I'm going to start this video by calling Jimmy out, because he always makes some sort of excuse every match he's in. He's like, oh, if I blah, 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 or this or that. So so that's my Jimmy impression there, for the day. There was a level of me going, all right, I know <laughs> you can't sell Zeno me, which helped out a lot in this <laughs> match. Uh, but yeah. you, you do have a... You, you did choose to go with the Secret Rare. Um... Uh, uh, it's not the counter counter one, is it? Wait, it's the uh, the, the Bukai, Bukai, the Bukai which is. stopped battle card swings, and you can steal my unison if you need it to, which is a heavy resource yeah. for this Goku deck. Before we get into Goku deck, let's talk about Gotenks. It's been a while since it's been on the channel, um, and you're back, so yeah, I'm I'm excited to be back. I'm excited to play this. Um, I've really enjoyed. Um, I always enjoy our matches because, um, especially near a set, because you typically play. Um, for the channel, you know, what we call theme decks, or I think of what we settled on as, like, theme decks. And, you know, everybody kind of shit all over this leader, and I think I even said it to you when I looked at it. I'm like, oh, yeah, low-budget Soul Striker. Um, but I really think this leader is kind of cool. Like, I, I, don't, I think it's kind of an insult to call it low-budget Soul Striker. Um, you know, it, it was a lot of fun to watch. Um, and... You know, as a player, you're really good at, like, finding ways to really milk resources in different ways. Um, and I think this leader allows you to do that. Um, but as far as this match, milking resources, there's the Goku, which is easily probably one of the most busted one-drops in the game. It is, hands down, one of the best searchers. I think I've said it before in other videos, but when it comes to a engine or a archetype that's meant for searching what it needs, that Goku is literally the best. Now, it is obviously, I think, locked to green. Mm -hmm. But if you oh no! Actually, I think we uh, I think you can search those the Zeno pieces, um, the Gogeta and and uh, Vegeta or Goku and Vegeta ones. I think we had that discussion. I don't know if that ever came to conclusive, but I'm not sure it is locked to green. Um, well, we'll have to look. This. Yeah, we'll have to double check it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so go on. Question: Is that Unison that dangerous? Um, it has the potential to be dangerous. I think. So the plus one for this unison, for, start, for starters, it's empowered three, if I'm correct. Um, but mm -hmm. the plus one on the unison allows you to draw two cards, and you get the bottom two cards. Because you're able, it allows you to, you're not gaining any extra cards out of it, but you're you're cycling cards that you don't need. So like, in this particular matchup, I'm like, okay, cool, I don't need this card or this card. Um, and it just helps kind of see the cards you want to see. And mm -hmm. there's, there's no limitation to that, it's just you draw two, then you bottom deck two. The, mi the minus X is where it gets tricky. So potentially, this card, for every two markers you remove for, uh, from it using that effect, you get to bottom one of your opponent's battle cards. But if you were to remove four markers, initially two of your opponent's battle cards, this card gains an additional 10k and double strike. The only problem with that, though, is that that's an act that's a activate main minus four. And if you do that, your opponent's mostly going, oh, well, you know what, I'm just going to negate the double strike. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, That's... I want to go over one thing before it's about to come up. Um, there is one misplay that I caught during this matchup, and it's one that doesn't overall change the effect of the match, in my opinion, because it could have just been done in a different order of operations and still had the same result. <clears throat> the leader on this card, on both the front and back, are only for the leader. And there's a point in this match where I will swing with this unison and use the leader effect on that, because I'm trying to maximize the leader's ability. But after mm -hmm. I swing with the unison, I play a battle card right afterwards, which I still swing with. So I could have done the leader effect on, which I couldn't, no, sorry, I couldn't do it on that one. So I would have had to burn the leader effect on my own swing just to get to where I needed to get to out of it. So it is a misplay on my part. I called it out in the video right there. Um, it's only meant for the leader and the leader only. So Interesting, yeah. And I mean, I don't think that's, that's not overly egregious, like pulling a card from your lap. And uh, magically making it uh, appear on webcam. So, you know. Because um, I can awaken now if I wanted to, naturally. Mm -hmm. 
And because um, you're down to the four. Yeah. Because all I gotta do is swing with this card right with this card here, and I could have comboed the card off that I discarded instead. I wouldn't get in the draw, but this leader still draws three naturally. This card on play draws one. Like it has the draw resource there naturally, which is pretty good. And that's where I felt kind of comfortable going against a deck that kind of could do hand control, but doesn't really specify in it though. Yeah, and I, I will say that's something that when I read your leader before the start, the natural draw three, and just knowing that there are ways for blue to draw if they need to. I wasn't thinking hand control. I mean, obviously, I run four eighteen super combos, so that's hand control. But um, I wasn't thinking, hey, that's what I need to be doing is taking out that hand. Um, now, I will say that to kind of go back to the use and why I asked that before I forget, um, I did. A, I probably dealt with it a little bit too much in this match um, because I removal is just rough. Um, in this particular matchup right now because I don't have a lot of six drops in hand and I'm afraid if I board one that you're just going to remove it immediately and I'm not going to be able to find another one. Um, and I'm probably over a line on the six drop, but that ability to just bottom deck a card seemed really relevant in this match. Yeah. And, and there you go. your six drops, they have the flux, so I can't touch them naturally, so I have to rely on other ways of getting rid of them. And Blue has even more resources to do that with set 16 being the thing. There's a three drop Vegeta that's just phenomenal and should probably be like at least a two of in almost every, in my opinion, every Soul Striker deck. Um, mm -hmm. Or any good blue deck that will kind of maximize your energy usage for yourself. It's like three, it's a dual attack, It's I think it's 19k or 20k, but on play, mm -hmm. it bounces two of your opponent's cards. I think I think they have to have greater energy, I can't remember 100% on that part, or they may not. This six drop this fucking card. is an oh amazing card. Now, it is a 20k card, but it's, initially it's a deadly defender. Um, mm -hmm. if your with has, triple strike. Yeah, with triple strike, <laughs> barrier, deflect. <laughs> Um, it has two, it has a permanent and auto. The permanent, if I'm correct, is you reduce the cost of this card in your hand by one for every energy your opponent has. It does have a specific cost of three, so you do have to have three energy just to play the card. But the permanent, sorry, the negate plays it in rest mode, and then the auto, I think it's auto, it might be another permanent. Um, when this card's in rest mode, your opponent's battle cards cannot attack your leader. Now, mm -hmm. you you only have one battle card on board. You have a unison. You have a leader swing, so you could dedicate those swings to other usage. So, yeah, I I gotta say that card, um, it really changed the way I viewed the rest of this match, um, probably to a detriment. Um, it is. Because I, I, I play go tanks where I want to stay at that five to six life range. Five being the preference because um, Homicidal Clones is active at five and you've got some other sort of conditions that five is the sweet spot. But knowing that um, a triple strike is coming on board or coming next turn is very, very scary. And it basically takes the power of dormant and says, eh, you know, that one swing that I'm going to get through I'm going to make you really burn some resources to do it. Um, and that's actually why I go into this Zarbon right now so hard, um, which I know he's easily removed, but I'm trying to give myself opportunities to avoid that triple strike. Um, and, and I think we've talked about it before. That is how you beat green. Um, maybe not necessarily hand control, but green in general is if you can get double strikers or triple strikers, that puts an, uh, an amount of pressure on that sort of, I'm not sure what the right way to phrase it, but I don't think green handles it as well. Yeah. Uh, well, one of the great things about green, and for some reason, uh, according to Jimmy, a lot of people disagree with this for some reason. I'm not sure why. It's one of the best negates, I feel like, in the whole game. Dormant potential. Um, mm -hmm. Well, yellow's getting some pretty good ones now, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dormant potential doesn't necessarily gate the first attack, but... It limits your opponent's attacks from the attack, the card that's swinging with, and then the um, one more attack afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I chose to swing the, the unison first here, just to either bait the blocker out, mm -hmm. and you obviously just let it go. Um, sorry, you didn't block it. So then I had to choose in this situation here, played the 3 drop Vegeta, just kind of grew the blocker, and then I had to figure out what 
the best situation? Do I swing with the leader to get a resand of my energy and control? Or do I swing <laughs> with the triple strike, putting in rest mode? That way, if you play in their background, you have to go for it first. But I potentially can do three damage to you. And I ultimately decided to swing with the uh, the battle card instead because I wanted to make sure that if you play a card, you have to spend resources to get rid of this card first. <clears throat> and now I'm running the counter counter because, you know, Bandai made a point to ban all counter counters and then was like, hey, we should print some more of those. Which, that one's not that bad. Um, we're going to see some bad counter counters here in a little bit, though. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, and this is, uh, talk about a learning experience. I did not realize that the homicidal clone was only blocker for the turn. So yeah. I thought I had this blocker on board that I was like, you know, going to the next turn with, which is not that big of a deal, but, um, it was good to know, you know, it was a good learning experience. Yeah. And um, I'll let you know, I, th I can't remember what. It was either you did the plus two, and I'm like, okay. And you mentioned blocker. I think that's what it was. Yeah. And, and I was like, it doesn't have blocker anymore. And you're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it loses blocker at the end of your opponent's turn. And then now I just figure go into the six drop, and then that gives me two swings at uh, the deadly defender with triple strike there. Um, which I think this is the turn where I do start to put a little bit of pressure on. Um, yeah, because there's the D magic. Um, and I think is this that turn where we basically were like overwhelm debate on whether we're going to use it or is it turn later? I'm trying to think. Huh. You, uh, knowing what's in your hand, I wish I would have picked better. You combo up pretty nicely. I feel like on this one to to guarantee this to go through. I think that's right. Yeah. I think, I think you're gonna do an 18 as well. Yeah, there she is. Yeah, um, yeah, there she is. So you pretty much bottom, you got rid of another damage match, which is really great. Then I had to actually choose a card that was still in my hand to bottom, and I was like, yeah, it's fine, just buy, whatever. Now, did you have the three cards that are going to be my demise in your hand at this point? No, not yet. Okay, good. That makes me feel a little bit better about my cell uh, EDK pick. Actually, um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I might have one of them. Yeah, well, it wouldn't have made. So, okay. Yeah. I haven't really talked much about the leader's ability yet. I just kind of mentioned earlier that it's leader Pacific. So on the front side, uh, you pitch a card. When this card's in battle, when you pitch a card, you uh, draw one card, add up one card in your life. Awaken. The Now it's activate. Battle instead of activate. Actually, it's always been activate. Um, battle. But the awaken side is that you pitch one of the cards from underneath it. This card gets 2,000 power boost mm -hmm. for the battle. And then... Major <sighs> About 14 cards in my deck all have effects where if this card is pitched from under your leader to the drop area, you could use this card in the combo if there's no other cards in your combo area. So initially, you I think you come with one card, you can put you at 20. I use the effect to go to 22. Then I paid one to play the Gohan afterwards, which is really good because the secondary effect is if this card, I think it's comboed. Uh, it's, it's, I think it's either from the hand or the drop because you know it, it places itself back in the combo if there's no other cards there. Uh, you can pay one just to play in rest mode, and there's there he is. there's Baby Ape, um, yeah. and that's also the reason why I swung the battle card first, and I would have swung to Unison next if if you didn't do it and just tried to bait that negate yeah. before I did anything. And that's for the viewers at home. Literally on announcement, I'm like, well, he's either got it or he's not, and you did, um, and, and that's to be expected. But you know, that's that's the the, the game we play and. Blue against green, or at least with Gotenks, you're on a clock. You know, if you let them get to that five energy mark, you've got to understand that's a part of the game. Um, at least Foo's banned now, so I don't have to worry about the, like, six in six energy insta-death. For sure. Um, it was so, unfortunate. I could not combo any higher than that. I know, which I thought was... Uh, well, I thought that was going to give me an opportunity to go for, uh, for blood here in a little bit, because I'm like, well, if he's not... You know, the, the comboing's not going where I think maybe I can, you know, get in for some attacks here. Uh, but before I forget, do you think this is going to be a deck that you return to? Or do you think this is going to be a deck that um, you end up putting away after you, you've done it for the channel? Um, 
so luckily enough, this locals, I haven't had a chance. I, I didn't need to build as many decks because a lot of people actually were interested in a lot of different things from this set, which helped me out mm -hmm. a lot from having to go cycle through every different color there is. Like, Nick played U7. I still want to play U7. It's one of the decks that's on my list. But I've only had a chance to really mess with this one and the Grand Priest. And I'm definitely going back to Grand Priest. Like, you can go so many rounds with that deck. It's amazing. And I think my next deck for that one is more of a burn deck. Ooh, but interesting. I... I do want to mess with this deck further. Um, my only problem is that, like, to maximize this leader's ability, in my opinion, you have to, like, you want to see these cards that um, that you want to put on your leader. That way you at least get one of the cards as a combo piece uh, during your opponent's turn. It just helps you using, uh, you don't have to use the resources from your own hand. You can use them from your leader's life when your opponent swings at you. Like I said, you combo one, boom, 20k. Cool. Activate battle from leader. There's my free 22, pretty much, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I chose to do the uh, the the three in that instance because I'm trying to maximize my energy during uh, Tanner's turn because I have a I do have another six-drop Goku in my hand that I can negate with, but I do need one more energy to do so. So instead of potentially him swinging and me hitting a life to do Dimension Magic, I think I... Oh, I don't have to mention magic. I thought I did. It might be a sense of being thin, but I'm trying to just make sure I get the three energy as soon as possible. Because like I know you get the go tanks out, and I know once those out, those could be problematic because they're dual attacks. They're 25 correct. Uh, my mm -hmm. triple strike is going away as soon as you play it, so I have to be ready for it in one way or another. And for me, that's to just play the uh, negate Goku. And yeah, I could have I could have used three there. Um, but that almost felt like a waste in a sense. And since it being wasn't enough, unfortunately, to just get me out of that attack, I would have had to spend another card in my hand. So that's why I chose to activate battle instead, which maybe was that's... me getting, kind of getting a little confident. Like, hey, I think I have this match as long as I play my cards right. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, um, I had some options. You can actually see them in the screen there. I had some double strike options that. I was hoping I could get you down to one, just one hit in, and then I was going to probably commit on the um, uh, Goku Spirit Boost one that lets you double strike, activate main. But you got another one of those six drops out, which I decided I'd just go ahead and remove with Barrier and commit to the double strike here on the Gotenks and hope that that gets me where I need to be. And I believe this is where you, baby, had you force me. Yeah. So. Also, I wasn't expecting this. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I openly agree taking one of these in because it's a great call. The deck draws enough, so if when you see it, you know you have a security blanket type thing where you just, mm -hmm. if you have to fall back on something, boom, get rid of that problematic card. Now I'm go going for the throat. And I had no other negates, negates in my hand, and I was like, yeah, you, I have to use this, unfortunately. Because um, that Goating also has, I think it has deflect, so, like, I couldn't balance it either. Yeah, it does. It, it does. So... so I had to use I had to use uh, hatch because I didn't have anything to stop that that double strike from hitting me, and then you could have been with your open hand. That wasn't going to be a pretty thing. And there it is again. <laughs> the second well, I play, yeah, 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 and, and that right there is game. Um, you know, and, and that's that them's the breaks, as they say. Um, but I don't even think I've got anything worth comboing in here to get up there. Um, yeah, and then, and then Jimmy lets me call Judge and play Baby Hatch on my side. Yeah. Oh, he had a Mafuba. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. Well, cool. It was a good match. I enjoyed it. It was very fun and uh, always a blast to play. And hopefully we'll see another version of SSG Goku at some time. Um, I know Tanner's going to kind of stick on Gotenks for a little bit, especially with the... Uh, the uh, Wolverine coming up. Yeah, which we're all going to, which would be pretty fun. Look forward to that video. We're... Maybe doing a video for it. Yeah. Um, with that being said, thank you for tuning in. Keep mind those buttons below and on the screen. And since Fluff isn't here, Tanner, would you like to do the outro? Uh, read your cards. Know your plays. Um, we make the mistakes so you don't have to. Fluff out.